From last week's video, you now have very solid goals which will bring you success and happiness in your life. But I hear you say, I've got too many of them. Or I hear you say, I've got too many tasks on my plate. In this video, we're going to use five mental models to help you prioritize what truly matters. We'll look at where all those models are coming from and how you can best use them to prioritize your goals. It's time to get your ducks in a row. My name is Greg Angelbert. I've had about a 20-year corporate career when I went from being a trainee to eventually a managing director, vice president. And I went from managing just one person, myself, to eventually about a thousand people. Today, I'm a master coach helping people, teams, and organizations to know themselves, to design their future self, and to become their future selves. Prioritization is the art of not wasting time to get what you want. For me, it's principally to get happiness and peace of mind. Also because I'm quite lazy, so I like my efforts to produce the maximum level of results. If you're unclear about your life goals, you might want to take a look at the video from last week. Or you might also want to look at the video about how to build life goals which are aligned with your life purpose, with your values and your interests and your strengths. Check it out here. So why do we use mental models to help you with prioritization? It is to ensure that you use your energy for the right thing, for what matters to you. It is also to know what are the right things to prioritize. It is to ensure that those priorities are yours. They are not from somebody else. They are not an external obligation on you. And it is to ensure that your priorities are having the highest impact possible. There are many ways to do prioritization, but today we are going to look at five of them just to make sure that we have the five best ones in different situations. The one thing model emphasizes the power of focus and concentration on a single task or goal at a time. It is working in sequence instead of trying to do too many things at the same time and as a result, not doing any of them very well. It was coined by Gary Keller and Jay Papasan in the book, The One Thing. In the book, it is formulated as one focusing question. What's the one thing I can do such that by doing it, everything else will be easier or unnecessary? It's about the first domino to knock over, so every action after that is easier. I use that personally for goal setting at the beginning of the year. I start with my seven aspirations for my life, and then on that, I build a list of goals based on what I could do during the year, like 2023. I end up with a very long list. But I like to have one thing, one thing that I will say, okay, this year, if I only do one thing that I'm happy with, it's gonna be that one, and I'm going to put a lot of effort and resources on that number one, that first thing. At work, I've used it to create a single point of focus for what will happen to the business during a year. Like one year, we had a bad order intake, we had bad sales coming in. So the next year, I basically said, okay, so this is really the priority for this year. If we only achieve one thing, we need to be bringing orders in. And then we looked at, okay, what is the most likely order that would bring a lot of results for the business? Then we focused on that. And then we looked at, okay, how do we make sure what is the one action or one thing that we need to do to bring that order in? So you see how it works. You start with a big thing, you go into the one thing and the one thing of that thing, etc. We didn't stop on all the rest, but it meant that we put more resources on that one thing. Here is a method to apply this model. Determine the big picture goal or outcome that you want to achieve. Break the objective into smaller actionable tasks or milestones. Evaluate the task and identify the one that, if you focus on it, will have the greatest impact on the overall goal. Schedule dedicated time slots in your day or in your week to make sure that you're going to be focused on that one task. Avoid multitasking and make sure that you prioritize the one thing before you move on to all the tasks. Coming back to the focusing question, if you're struggling with answering that question, you might be at crossroads in your life, you might not be completely clear about where you want to go. For that, you might want to come back to your life purpose, to what is central to your life at this point in time. And if you want to know more about how to do this, check this out. The 80-20 rule is also called the Pareto Principle. It states that 20% of effort lead to 80% of results or outcomes. Wilfredo Pareto, an Italian polymath who lived during the 19th and 20th century, found that a minority of input typically generate the majority of outputs in various domains. One of the observations, for instance, was about 20% of the population owning 80% of the assets in that country. And it's something that is still visible today. The main concept here is that a lot of the efforts that we put in something might not contribute as much to actually focusing on a few activities that will produce much more of the results and outcomes. 
If you take McDonald's, for instance, they are focusing on the 20% of top selling items on the menu and streamlining their entire operation according to this. You can also think about Softalkbergs and the impact that they have on users. Usually 20% of the bugs are creating 80% of the pain that end users are experiencing. And for your life, I notice for me is that 20% of the time that I spent on exercising was actually producing 80% of the result. For the rest of the 80%, I was maybe getting 20% of the gain. Hit training everybody. And here is a method to apply this model. Determine the areas or domains in your life where you would like to apply this 80-20 rule. It can be about friendship, investment, etc. Evaluate the inputs, which are the efforts and resources, and the output, which is the results, outcomes, to see patterns, like how much time do you spend with some friends, and how much do you feel that you're getting out of it, considering the things that you want out of those friendships. Then determine the 20% of activities, the 20% of actions, that are producing 80% of the desired outcomes. Prioritize your time, energy, and resources towards those precious few. Make sure they receive sufficient attention and investment from you. Then assess the remaining 80% of the activities to decide if they can be delegated, if they can be postponed, or if they can be simply eliminated. This way, you will free up more resources for the vital few. You like this video so far? Then you know what to do. And also subscribe, put the notifications on if you want to receive content like this every week. For more information about mental models and goal setting, check out in the description more resources. The Eisenhower Matrix is a four quadrant framework that helps prioritize tasks based on their urgency and importance. It's about categorizing tasks effectively and allocating your time and energy in the best way possible. It is named after former US President Dwight Eisenhower, who was known for his time management skills during the Second World War and as President of the US. Tasks can be classified into four categories, urgent and important, important but not urgent, urgent but not important, and not urgent and not important. The point here is to do what is important and urgent and to make sure that you schedule what is important but not urgent. In real life, what you will also see, and you need to pay attention to that, is a lot of people get overwhelmed by the urgent important to the point that they do not do anything which is important, not urgent. The problem with that is you don't do things which are truly structural, uh, truly good for moving forward on a long-term basis. So the trick here is really to make sure that you schedule the important, not urgent, and that you respect the time that you have allocated for doing them and you don't get overwhelmed by the urgent important task. And here is a method to apply this model. Start by listing all the tasks and activities that you need to address. Evaluate the urgency of each task and determine whether it needs to be absolutely done right away or if it can be done later. Consider the importance of each task according to your values, your purpose, and the desired outcome that you have. Place each task into one of the four quadrants according to their urgency and importance. And allocate your time and resources according to each quadrant. And you need to start with the urgent important. But as I say, make sure that you reserve a significant amount of time, 20 or 30%, to the important but not urgent task. Now, by order of importance, schedule, delegate, and delete. Once you've done that, you can truly do what matters. The critical pass is a project management tool used to identify the most critical task and their dependencies. This is to ensure that a project stays on track and that you can identify potential bottlenecks or risks. It also helps to understand the total project duration. We all have projects that we need to deal with, whether in our personal life or at work, and this model is very useful for that. Critical Pass Method, CPM, was developed by Morgan Walker and James Kelly of DuPont, an American chemical company. If you want to renovate your home or build a new house, then project management tools and the Critical Pass will be very useful. The Critical Pass will help you understand for your home renovation or your house building what are the tasks on which your schedule completely depends. For a simple example, you need to build the foundations before you can build the rest of the house. Here's a method to apply this model. Start by clearly outlining what is the project purpose, deliverables, and goals. Identify all the required tasks to complete the project and also the dependencies between those tasks. Estimate the time to complete each one of those tasks realistically. Analyze the sequence of tasks, considering their duration and dependencies, to identify the longest path to deliver the project. And give special attention to the tasks that you have identified on the critical path. You need to give them sufficient time, resources, to ensure that this path 
is respected. I would recommend to use simple project management tools to help you with building a work breakdown structure and also with identifying the critical path. It sounds complicated, but there are some very simple software that can help you with that. The satisfaction versus maximization model challenges the notion of always seeking the best or perfect outcome in decision making. It is associated with a Nobel laureate, Herbert Simon, who introduced the concept of bounded rationality. When we take decisions, we're often influenced by limited time or information or our cognitive capacity. Trying to maximize means that for any decision, you look at all the criteria to take that decision and you're trying to maximize every single element of it. With that, it's sure that eventually you're gonna get the best outcome if you manage to maximize every single element. The drawback of this is that it takes more time and you are going to stress quite a lot to try to maximize everything. And a lot of people who do that tend to second guess themselves after thinking that they might have made a better choice. Satisfiers focus on making decisions based on the same criteria, but selecting the ones which are most important and deciding what is an okay level for each one of those criteria. This way the bar is not as high. It's a little bit taking Pareto in mind. It's not trying to reach 100%, but it's trying to reach 80%. As a result, people who are satisfiers tend to be a lot more chilled. They're a lot more relaxed and they're a lot happier with their decision. They don't look back. Here's a method to apply this model. Identify the key criteria that need to be satisfied to make sure that you're happy with your decision. Determine the minimum acceptable levels for each one of the criteria. Consider that you're redline. Anything above, you're okay with it. Anything under, you say, nah, that doesn't work. Look at the available options that you have for each one of the criteria and the levels, the thresholds that you have identified. Select the alternative that actually meets the criteria, that meets the thresholds that you want to achieve. You can also weight this system. You can put a multiplier for some of the criteria because they are more important to you than others. This way you get an overall score. Do you reach the overall score that you want to have? This model is very much about removing a lot of stress in decision making and also making you feel much more satisfied. In other words, learn to trust your gut. Now that we've covered the top five, there are also some models that we talked about last week when we were talking about goal setting that you can apply for prioritization. When you think about the regret minimization framework, what would be one thing that you would regret the most when you're 90 that you would not have done in your life. Or if you use the first principle model, then you'll be able to actually remove a lot of the fluff, a lot of the things which are unnecessary for taking a decision, or the things which actually are counterintuitive, the things which are blocking you for taking the decision. You will focus on what truly matters in the decision. And remember, practice makes perfect. Or maybe practice just makes you good, which in this case is good enough. I will leave you with a quote from Henry David Thoreau, an American naturalist, essayist, poet and philosopher. It's not enough to be busy, so are the ants. The question is, what are we busy about? Now you know the most important task to focus on. You might want to make sure that you have the right habits to keep your task on track. If you want to know more about this, check out this video.